Hi, my name is Jenny Lam. I am a surgical resident at UCSD. Thank you for spending your Friday afternoon here. Today I'll be presenting a project regarding an ERAS protocol for bariatric surgery in a single institution. I have no disclosures. So as I'm sure you know, laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy has become the most commonly performed bariatric surgery in the world. Over 200,000 sleeve gastrectomies were performed in the U.S. in 2016, which was about a 10% increase from the prior year. Uh, however, laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy can be associated with significant short-term uh, pre-op morbidity. Enhanced recovery after surgery protocols have been utilized in multiple different surgical disciplines and have been found to be effective in decreasing length of stay and reducing complication rates while being cost effective. There are several different components that make up an ERAS protocol that can be broken down into the phases of the patient's surgical course. Overall, the key factors include educating the patient on expectations and goals of surgery, as well as accelerating surgical milestones while still decreasing or maintaining a safe level of perioperative morbidity. <clears throat> Several barriers have been identified in ERAS protocol implementation, and they can generally be broken down in two different categories, the first being costs. At one quaternary care center, it was estimated to cost approximately $500,000 to implement an effective ERAS protocol. Some of these costs include hiring additional staff, uh, allocating dedicated time of existing staff to ERAS duties, and in investing in an audit system. While they were successful in obtaining a net savings of about $400,000 in the first year of implementation. An initial investment of a half a million dollars is not uh, insignificant. The second barrier is communication. If all parties involved in the patient's care are not on the same page, the ERAS protocol does not work. In this study, we aim to assess safety and feasib feasibility of a low-cost ERAS protocol for laparoscopic sleep gastrectomy. We performed a retrospective analysis of consecutive sleep gastrectomies performed at a single institution from December 2010 to December 2017. We initiated our ERAS protocol on July 2016, and our patients were stratified into ERAS and standard of care groups based on this date. Our primary outcomes were length of stay and seven and 30 day readmission rates. Our secondary outcomes were <coughs> complication rates that were graded by Clavian Dindau classification system and mortality. Uh, we included adults that had received laparoscopic sleep gastrectomy and we excluded any patients that had had revisional surgery or were pre-admitted uh, for other unrelated comorbidities. This is a diagram that outlines the key factors of our ERAS protocol. It involves several of the same components of well-established ERAS guidelines. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, This table highlights some of the differences between the standard of care and ERAS groups. However, it's not inclusive of all the details of a patient's surgical course. Uh, in the ERAS group, patients were given clear and directive counseling regarding goals and expectations of the surgery, and prior, they only received risks and benefits entailed in the surgical consent. Perioperatively, patients were given a multimodal antiemetic regimen uh, when prior it had been variable, but usually consisted of monotherapy. Uh, and this continued into their post-operative phase. Intraoperatively, anesthesiology made a concerted effort to avoid fluid overload and maintain the patients no more, no more thermic and euglycemic. Postoperatively, patients were given multimodal analgesic therapy. 
and uh, routine Foley catheterization was no longer used. Uh, patients underwent a rigorous early mobilization protocol that involved ambulating within uh, arriving to the ward uh, 30 minutes and every two hours after that. Patients had earlier oral intake that was actually initiated in the recovery unit when prior they had been started on post-op day one and the patients were discharged on post-op day one. Our discharge criteria was similar in both groups. Uh, patients just needed to meet standard post-surgical milestones. Baseline demographic information was collected, and of note, there was a significant difference in age and BMI in the two groups. Uh, the patients in the standard care group were older, and the patients in the ERAS group had a higher BMI. Uh, linear regression was performed on our primary outcomes to account for these covariate differences, uh, and they were not found to be significant contributors. The ERAS group was found to have a significantly decreased length of stay of one day versus two days, and there was no difference in seven or 30 day readmission rates or complication rates. In conclusion, our ERAS protocol for sleep gastrectomy resulted in a shorter length of stay without increasing perioperative morbidity. While it may be optimal to have a dedicated ERAS team with a developed infrastructure, it is feasible to implement an ERAS protocol with significant results without these components. Thank you.